going to listen to all the speeches that's been given today and I'm going to pay attention to the minutest of details. To give you an example, when our, uh, when our TMOD spoke a while back, he mentioned three celebrities. If you remember those names, then you're on the way of being a good listener. When called upon towards the end of the meeting by the G, I'm going to ask you all similar questions to see how attentive you were from the first minute to the last. Thank you. Thank you. from me and my team as of now. We'll see you again towards the end of the meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you, Toastmaster Ankur. We look forward to some constructive feedback at the end of the meeting. So, all, are you all ready for the prepared speeches? Yes! yes. So, uh, Toastmaster Mahesh, could you read out the project guidelines for the first speech? The speaker is advocating to canvas speech board and the purpose of this project is to learn and review basic methods for writing a speech with a defined purpose and to present a well-organized speech on any topics. Thank you. So our first speaker is an ambitious person who is pursuing her BBA from Mount Carmel College. Just like how she has multiple subjects in her college, she has had multiple mentors in life. But her favorite mentor is our mentor at Toastmasters. Any guesses who that is? Mario. Yeah. <laughs> so she loves anime so much that she gets transported into the world of Naruto and Haikyuu. Much to the angst of her mother. But more important, most importantly, patriotism runs through her veins and her heart beats for Hindustan. Let's welcome Toastmaster Priyanka on stage. Toastmaster Priyanka, essence of our country, essence of our country, Toastmaster Priyanka. India is the cradle of the human race, the birthplace of the human speech, the mother of history, the grandmother of legend, and the great grandmother of tradition. Our most valuable and instructive materials in the history of man are treasured up in India alone. The other day, my mom and I were watching a serial. Well, because my phone battery had died and I had nothing else to do. I certainly wasn't going to be productive. But at least it led me to the speech. I'm sure many of you would have been on the receiving end of their comments about the background of the scene, like, oh my god, change fast, fast. One of her comments piqued my interest. It was about how the ancient or past fashions, the way of styling of clothes, jewellery, hair, are being incorporated in the recent trends. It commenced my chain of thoughts regarding the gradual transitioning of old to new to old again. We lean towards the growing trends of fashion of other cultures and try to assimilate them in ourselves too. It's like your mother carefully weighs the option and chooses the best product to buy and gives you a wrapped gift. You, unaware of its contents, gift it to someone else and after a while, they give it back to you and you are impressed with them for thinking about such a creative package. Your mother paid for it in the beginning, yet others fell away. You aren't even aware of it when they give it to you in a subtle and roundabout way. You give them the credit your mother rightfully deserves. I hope this example gives you a little insight about the essence of my speech now before you start bracing yourself for six to seven minutes of what you might think will be a very tech talk speech, give it time and I'll make sure you won't regret it. I have taken up these seven minutes to bring up the need of this hour, the essence of our country. I would request all of you to listen to my ideas and reasons with an open mind. People exercise an unconscious selection in being influenced, be it the influencers themselves. They are lured in by the culture of outside thereby oblivious to the greatest inspiration of all trends, the one that started them all, our culture. A lot of people are leaning towards Korean trends. For example, their skincare routine. How many times have our mothers or grandmothers coerced us into applying oil on our faces? It removes tanness, it softens and moisturizes your skin. Instead of spending more than 1000 rupees on all these products, we can just listen to them. I mean, yes, I understand, huge pride blow. But still, actually try it out. We save more than 500 bucks. We can get a lifetime supply of Pani Puri. <laughs> Turmeric, curd, and a little bit of honey.
that is the bride he has kept with. My mom practices this and I have never seen her with a dark circle. Probably because her sleep cycle is healthier. But still, this routine definitely played a significant role. A lot of youth nowadays, me too sometimes, lean towards other cultures. We think, we ignore their advice and think it's too old school to practice their very effective techniques. I mean, aren't we attracted to the products because of the advertisement done by the influencers? They don't transition media of before and after using the products and sure, they may be compelling. But we have the best cost-effective example right in front of us. Our mothers being the prettiest models for them too. Now, I'm not accusing you for leading towards other choices. That is solely based on your comfort level. Just a not so minor point is that we are indefinitely contributing to the growth of their economy by buying their products. Our products demand fall and our economy is at a disadvantage. This is growing steadily over the years. Decline in mental health. People losing focus of what's important. And to improve these conditions, pills are prescribed. These pills are taken for a quick result, except they are very short term. We take them frequently over the years, which drags the expiration date of the cure. Well, here's a long term remedy it's yoga. Lack of sleep, there's a pranayama exercise for that. I know because I practice yoga. So, granted, I think about the difference of momos we get inside and outside knowledge. But when I actually pay attention, it is very effective. There's all, there are uh, ancestors invented every possible asana for any for every cure. Ekra Desi, a practice follower in Indian culture, where you fast every 15 days. There are speculations going on about how this is actually a religious practice done for God's sake. So happy to burst your bubble, it's not. It's one of the most healthiest remedies done for our body. It removes toxins from your body. My grandparents practice these and they're more active than I am. Their back is straight, my mind's all slouched. I wonder why, but now I know. There's also a scientific study going on where all the algorithms and theorems that we learned in maths, physics, etc were actually discovered and developed by our ancestors. They are being uncovered now. That is, we never had to learn those annoying, unpronounceable Greek names. We give the rest of the world way too much credit for the work and scintillating discoveries done by our country's ancestors. We promote other cultures, thereby ours takes a back, becomes a back bench, and no one pays any attention to them. Well, it's time we change our seat. Move away from the influence of backbencher to the pet, to being the teacher's pet. Because no, they aren't actually annoying. They don't just company to the teachers. They take strategic decisions to improve their welfare. Something we should think about. Let's make our culture, Indian culture and practice, the most sought after by all, by our very own idols. you get stuck anywhere with taxes, you know where to go. So let's welcome our second speaker, Toastmaster Sanjay on stage. Thanks. Toastmaster Sanjay, time is precious. Time is precious, Toastmaster Sanjay. Uh, thank you, Mukunda, for a wonderful introduction. Uh, good evening, Toastmasters and guests. Good evening. 
time creates all of it, all the things and time <coughs> destroys them all time burns all the things and time extinguishes that fire this is a famous quote from mahabharata it says the importance of time which takes care of everything we we cannot stop time we have to plan our thing and execute it well and become more productive as all of us here would have agreed that time is precious would you agree that time is precious yes yes, yes. so today we will be going through some of the important things how time we can manage i have read various books on time management and understood that we in all of the books one common thing is there that we have to pen down our to do list and daily track on that so that we can understand what is important and what is unimportant if we are able to understand the unimportant thing then we can achieve great results for this i had started maintaining a journal in which i started writing the important things and unimportant things and then in night before going to the bed i would take what went well and what did not went well for example my to do list will contain which book i will read uh, in the office what work is important and which are critical and in the home how how i will manage various things like that i will write on a daily basis and then track the same so that it leaves me with sometimes with an achieving thing and sometimes i will not be able to achieve so i understood that we should also factor other other things like social media friend circle and things like that so that we do not feel as a loser at the end of the day we feel as a winner so i thought of this and in one of the incident that happened where i had given a date that by 31st march 2022 i will purchase a car i written my goal clearly that i will purchase a car for rupees 10 lakhs budget around 10 lakhs and i will visit various showrooms and take the test drives and features and things like that i along with my wife went to the various showrooms but i could not uh, zero down on the purchase of the car before 31st march 2022 because i was confused there were so many models and so many features is some cars have some good features and some did not and it was not giving 100% satisfaction so i missed the deadline then again i thought of purchasing the car in july 2022 i went to the showroom mark the showroom in the mid july where I, along with my wife and then i was also confused at that point of time my wife said to me that if you are not making a decision today then drop the idea as it is not every time postponing the things she tell in an angry mode then we had a heated debate in the heat, de heated debate i said if we are not purchasing the car we are saving the environment for this she said that do not give yarn too much to me uh, either you decide today or you drop it uh, so i had no other choice but to tell her you tell which car to purchase and then finally at that day we purchased the car we paid the booking amount so this shows us that we should be tough in life uh, some people should be with us who are tough so that we can take decisions if we are not having people with only goodies goodies then we will not do anything in life so we should have some tough people other incident happened that in the office meeting one of my team lead, team member uh, raised the point that there is no work life balance as a leader i had to pitch in and make it very clear to him that how the work life balance has to be calculated for this i would like everyone to concentrate on this thing i asked them that 
they are 365 days. I asked him how many days are there in the year. He said 365 days. I told him that are you working on Saturday and Sunday? He said no. Then can you please remove one or four days from it? Then it will be 261 days. Then I asked him is the company giving you paid leaves? Then he, I, he said that 42. I asked him can you remove this 42 days from 261 days? Then he said that it is 219 days. Now I asked him a simple question that how many hours do you work a day on an average? He said 8 hours a day. I told him that you take coffee break, lunch break and other personal calls. Can you remove that? Then he said one and a half hours to two hours. Then I asked him that can you remove this two hours from the eight hours? Then he said six hours. Then I told him can you multiply this six hours into this 219 days? Then the total hours work is 13, 1314 hours. I told him, can you please divide this by 24 hours? Then the figure is 55 days. I said him, for 55 days, the company pays you for 365 days, which will take care of yourself, your family, your personal needs, and your retirement benefits. And you say there is no work life balance. You have to manage your time. You have to see what are important and what are not important. You have to prepare a Excel sheet in which you have to write down into three buckets that is important, uh, not that much important and uh, distracting work. So in important comes the critical which will save your job. So that are very critical you have to put that and give prioritization. And the second one is uh, important but not that much critical to save the job. He has to put list down there and other distractions like social media and things like that. I told him to maintain this logbook.